Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I just got off the phone with an idiot, gotta call him an idiot. Can I explain to you guys just for a moment what happened? Because I think you're gonna find this interesting. I have on my computer, um, let's first go to the website, but let's show you. In my sound system, this is the speakers for the computer. This is the speakers for my headset, but I'm also using my Bluetooth speaker, which when I connect the Bluetooth, let's do that. Come on, Bluetooth. Hurry up, Bluetooth. When I connect my Bluetooth, well, it's already paired. Okay. So when my phone rings, and someone calls me on my Google Voice, it rings through the computer, rings through the Bluetooth, and it rings through the cell phone. So, what I did not do, I answered with Google Voice. Don't normally do that. But I answered with Google Voice, forgetting to program the speakers. Ladies and gentlemen, person called me, and I said, how may I help you? But I couldn't hear them. So I am on the computer trying to correct the so-called settings and the individual is still talking and so I finally get to hear his voice and I hear he's been talking and so I say excuse me hold on a second he's still talking excuse me hold on a second he's still talking excuse me I need you to hold on a second he said I said hey <laughs> finally he says yeah I said I was telling you, excuse me. Oh, well, you were sounding garbled, so I couldn't hear what you were saying. Excuse me. If I was sounding garbled and you couldn't hear what I was saying, then why didn't you stop talking and tell me, hold on, I can't hear what you're saying and wait to see what I was saying? Ladies and gentlemen, he said at this moment, well, you don't have to get belligerent. And I said, oh, and hung up the call. Let me get something clear because people are not understanding me. I didn't have an attitude last year. I've had an attitude since the day I was born. You don't call me and cop an attitude with me. I don't have the time for it. I am working since five o'clock this morning on about everything. Why? Because that's what I do. I told you, told you people, I don't get a day off. I scheduled a consult with somebody and I told you guys for an hour I will give you my time I'll answer all of your questions the person who called me extremely respectful we had a conversation ladies and gentlemen the conversation lasted two hours I did not penalize him for the extra hour I gave him my time because it ain't about money it's about respecting my time by the time we got finished with the conversation, he and I will be talking again on Sunday. I'm not going to do this for all of you, but I'm doing this for him. Because not only did he show me respect, but when I listened to his issues, I knew that I could provide him some guidance on help. I won't write the motions for him that he needs, because I don't have the time to do that. But I can direct him as to what he needs to do. He's already spoke to attorneys. And none of the attorneys told him to do anything that I'm telling him to do. But when you look at the rules of the court, this is what you're supposed to do in this situation. So that's why he called. He got what he was wanting in the conversation, including all the other questions that he had to ask about other things. So you call me, you show me respect. I will show you all the respect in the world. But you dial my number. This person was calling me because he wanted you all to know about this TD account. He wanted you all to know who the so-called custodian is. Now see, what you guys don't know when you look at 363.27, it will let you know that the parent of a minor can open up the account in the minor's name. The custodian must have an existing treasury direct account. But in here, it says that the custodian is the parent. Ladies and gentlemen, the custodian is the parent or the guardian. And according to this person, 
I was giving you misinformation. I was misinforming you. According to this person, I'm misleading people. And he was not happy because he had sent my videos to everybody else. Ladies and gentlemen, please can any of you go back and look at my videos? Can anybody tell me when I ever asked anybody, please send this to everybody and your grandmama? Because even your grandmama needs to know what I'm talking about. Did, has I, have I ever asked anybody to do that? First, let me explain something to you so that you get it. You are all minors. Every single one of you. So who is the parent? So, Who the, is the parent? I got people sitting up here trying to challenge what I'm telling you because they read one sentence and they don't know the foundation for which this junk is written? Ladies and gentlemen, understand, the United States resembles that of a ward to his guardian. Their relationship to the United States resembles that of a ward to his guardian. Ladies and gentlemen, there is this thing called sovereign guardianship and here you have it the sovereign power of guardianship as long as you are construed to be a minor your mommy and daddy are not your parents the United States government is your parent which means the Federal Reserve falls under that so I'm gonna give you one more little clue one more little hint because I told you all you need to do your own research, idiot saying I'm misleading people. I haven't misled a single person. Everybody wants to know how to pay their bills. Everybody wants to know how to do this, how to do that. And they're not willing to do the research. Did you see this right here? How many laws have I shown you with this? Perrin Patre. The sovereign power of guardianship. You are minors, every single one of you, which means the United States government exercises the sovereign power of guardianship. Who is their fiscal service agent? Did we not read that the fiscal service agent is whom, 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 whom? The Federal Reserve. Just because you call them and they tell you that you're listening to those people on videos they're misinforming you and you're gonna believe some idiot some public servant. Uh, he's not even a public servant he's just or she's just cuz this person I got another email saying well no it's the same it's the same person saying that they contacted the quote-unquote Federal Reserve sorry another email from a person who said they contact the same the Federal Reserve and when they contacted the Federal Reserve the Federal Reserve told them this and the Federal Reserve told them that. Federal Reserve ain't showed them a single law. Federal Reserve ain't showed them a single statute. But, okay, you know, the Federal Reserve told me that. I gotta believe what they say. Sorry, I came to this article, but what I, it does have the phrase. The only problem is, it doesn't have the article talking about it. Because I don't see sovereign power or guardianship in there. But this is the correct phrase in the case law that I shown you in Corpus Juris Secundum. I just didn't feel like pulling out Corpus Juris Secundum to show you this again, because you see it again, sovereign party of guardianship again. And let's go here for a second. I have no idea what this site is, but let's go here nonetheless. Now while we're going there, let's see. See, Professor Vernon pointed out that American courts have long held that the state has sovereign power guardianship over minors. I didn't make this up. But apparently, because I'm giving you this information, I'm misleading you. What I'm saying is that you all are asking the wrong questions. It doesn't matter if they tell you, we don't maintain any accounts for anybody. I'm not asking you whether or not you maintain. I'm asking you, who have you authorized to maintain the accounts? You may not do it directly, but you manage accounts for the United States Treasury. 
you may not do it directly and if they got a problem with that ladies and gentlemen just tell them I am on social security and on my social security it comes from the United States Treasury and it shows up as a Treasury Twek that's why the Treasury Twek and since mine shows up as a Treasury Twek it says I got an account so you don't get to tell me I don't got an account because the Treasury said I got an account and you guys are the fiscal agent for the United States Treasury so I need to find out Mo. They were you? See, they told one guy, Oh, you're listening to those people on the video. Ladies and gentlemen, they told another guy, another guy earlier this week, that he wasn't listening to people on the video, but that he had to go and speak to the bank who opened the account. Hold on. See, that's the Bluetooth. Hold on one second. Mr. K, I'll have to call you back during the video. Okay. All right, I'll call you right back. Right back. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Mr. K. Mr. K said, all right, bye. All right, see, respect. Told him I had to call him back. He said, okay. Bye. He didn't say, but I need to talk to you right now. No, 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 it's important. I got to tell you what I saw on my mind because my mind is important to me. That's what I'm getting from people. They think that what they got to talk about, what they got to tell me about is important to me. That I should be concerned because they want to talk about it. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is really irritating. And so, I guess I'm going to have to be belligerent since the United States says that I'm a belligerent individual. A combative, belligerent individual. Ladies and gentlemen... I want you to see the ramification of Wisconsin versus Yalder. The professor Finberg pointed out that American courts have long held that the state has sovereign power or guardianship over minors, which, remember, how do I know about this? Because I read it in the case law. I've read the case law on this. So the guardian, the parent, it's not the mommy and daddy. It didn't say the mother and father, did it? It said parent. Legalese term. All right. Have held that the sovereign party of guardianship over minors, which confer upon it the right or perhaps even the duty to look after the interests of those who are incapable of protecting themselves, is in the state. After all, compulsory education laws are designed to end child labor and license literacy rates or increase literacy rates sorry people and ensure that everyone has a chance to become informed and contributed citizens of society ladies and gentlemen i gotta put you guys on pause this is satcom so hold on you see what a difference two telephone calls can make i'm gonna you know what no, I can't turn down the ringer because I'm expecting a call. So, sorry, uh, but today has been one of those days, ladies and gentlemen. So, I got people who are catching me at the wrong time. You don't want to catch me at the wrong time. And I've actually been answering the phone today. I've answered just about every call that's come through. And it's nerve-wracking uh, the way that people say that they're not asking a question, but then they still ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you again, I don't have time to be answering each of your questions because one question leads to another question, leads to another question, leads to another question, leads to a conversation, leads to, I don't have the time for that. So, but I only have one question. Sorry. No, this is not, I, we're not, this is not let make a deal. You're not Monty Hall. You guys remember Monty Hall? Let's make a deal. Okay. This is not, let's make a deal. I know you all are used to other people having YouTube channels where you can go on a YouTube channel and you can leave comments and they say leave me a comment and I'll respond blah blah blah. You don't see that on my videos. You don't hear me say nothing about I'm going to respond to you because I'm not going to obligate myself like that. I'm not looking for fans. I'm not looking for viewership. So I didn't ask any of you to shop my videos around to anybody. I, I'm not asking you to do that. If you want the information, tune in. But don't expect anything more than information. 
There is no contract. We don't have an agreement. And nobody can show me an agreement. So let's get back to this sovereign part or hour of guardianship. Okay? It says... The reason why they have these stupid labor laws is for compulsory education as to design to end child labor and increase literacy rates and to ensure that everyone has a chance to become informed and contributing citizens of society through formal education. It is a safeguard to ensure their growth is not stunted by prematurely assuming the responsibilities of an adult. This is what the court said, people. <laughs> okay. And as Justin Heffman, Heffer, Heffer, Hefferman said it, he said religion, morality, good government, and happiness are all dependent upon education. Excuse me? Just because he said it, that makes it make sense? This is what the Supreme Court said. Look, in the United States Supreme Court, there was a dissenting opinion. Even though Justice Douglas, that's right, Justice Douglas of the Supreme Court, voted with the majority of the Supreme Court, he dissented in part, he wrote, The education of the child is a matter on which the child will often have decided views. Or, yeah, he may want to be a pianist or an astronaut. You see how I said pianist and not pianist? Pianist. 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 I'm a pianist. Okay. Anyway. Or an astronaut. Or an oceanographer. To do so, he will have to break from the Amish tradition. It is the student's judgment, not his parents, that this is essential to the right of the student to be masters of their own destiny. If he is harassed by the Amish way of life, by those in authority over him, and his education is tonsated, his entire life may be stunted and deformed. Excuse me? That don't make any sense. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a case involving an Amish 16-year-old. See? Look. Let's read this first. Those of us who left the Amish know how we had to leave the community to have any other options open up to us. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not true. I'm sorry, but understand the Amish. They don't get in trouble. They don't cause no problem. Don't start none, won't be none. And if that is their culture, the United States government is not supposed to be interfering with it. But anyway, in the Amish mind, no vacation, or excuse me, vocation, is an option if someone else in the community hasn't already done it. Excuse me? Why is that a problem? Well, I want to be able to do whatever I want to do. The Amish doesn't stop you from doing whatever you want to do. The Amish does suggest that you not do things that would violate God's law. No, I just, I'm just telling you about the Amish. I don't know about the Amish. I just know the basics about the Amish. I don't, I'm not for them, not against them. But again, this is somebody who got a taste of the nectar of society, of the wicked and twisted society in which we live. And they were enticed and they said they want to be a part of that. Where we have so many people who hate the way our society is and don't want to be a part of it. This is not about leaving the Amish, not leaving the Amish. This is about whether or not somebody has the right of choice. They're saying the Amish doesn't give you a choice. Of course they do. You can leave if you want. Well, anyway, let's go. It says, leaving the Amish at the tender age of 13 or 14 is also not an option. Excuse me. At the tender age of 13 and 14, you can't even decide whether or not you want to drink, smoke, or do anything else. Okay? If you don't have the right to choose to vote, to smoke, to go and join the army then what makes you think the person should have the right to leave the culture and society for which their mother and father oversees them? So, no. Not good enough. When they come of age, they are allowed to do whatever they want. Go ahead. Go ask anybody in the Amish community. When they come of age, they get to leave and go wherever they want. That's up to them. The Amish also do the excommunication stuff. But this video is not about the Amish, or about the people who agree with the Amish. This video is about the age of majority, 
and about what a minor is according to the law. Okay? Notice what it says. It says, this can lead to such feelings as being trapped. This was obvious, not what Justice, obviously not what Justice Berger had in mind when he wrote. Of course it was what he had in mind, because we can read minds. Hold on, got to bring this up a little bit. Uh-oh, too far. As the record shows, compulsory school attendance at the age of 16 in the Amish children carries with it a very real threat of undermining the Amish community and religious practice as they exist today. Okay, there is something very disturbing about this. This would mean the survival of the culture is dependent on denying their youth an adequate education. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, the Amish do not deny their youth education. They never did. They actually teach their youth and they learn and they are very well-mannered individual. Just go and look, go and see. Judge them, see them for yourself, but don't do it because you read some stupid article. Again, this was only to let you know that according to the individual who said, and we're gonna go back to that in a moment, the American courts have long held that the state has a sovereign power of guardianship. This is the point you need to focus on. The only thing about it, I'm looking for the date of that case because I have part of the case, but I don't know when the case was. And it doesn't give you when the case was heard. But I do have part of that case in our paperwork. So let's do, oh, it's at the bottom of the screen. It gives us a footnote. Okay, so we got the case. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Well, anyway, let's go back here so that you guys will get this. Even though Title 31 of Code of Federal Regulations says that the parent may and pay attention to this. The parent may open up the account for a minor. That It literally says that. But look, look, the custodian must conduct all transactions in a minor account on behalf of the minor. Okay, and they show you in here that the custodian means the parent. Ladies and gentlemen, let's look up the legal definition for parent. Since I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's just see. All right. Oh, by the way, many of you are contacting SACCOM via email, listing your job qualifications in the um, contact SACCOM section. Uh, you need to stop. Like I told you, if you contact SACCOM, you will automatically not be considered. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I got to This is SACCOM again. Got to have you hold on one second. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about parent. The, now, you see, this thing doesn't give me the legal definition. It just gives me the definition. Okay, I want the legal definition. So, what is the legal definition of parent? Legal definition is parent. You see how it's in a lowercase p? It's uppercase p here, but lowercase p here. It's a noun. The lawful and natural father and mother of a person. Or the word does not mean grandparent or ancestor, but can include an adoptive parent. Hmm, let's see. Descent and distribution. The area of law that pertains to the transfer of real and personal property of descent who, a decedent who failed to leave a will or makes a parent's definition of parents. How is this having to do anything with real and personal property? Anyway, no, it talks about the transferring of real and personal property. So it ain't talking about the child as real and personal property. So don't y'all think that. The lawful mother and father of a person. Appeal of Gibson, Massachusetts. The word is distinguished from ancestors. Ladies and gentlemen, I brought you here so that you can see how parent is defined. Now, what you didn't know, and I want you to pay attention because you think that it is the relationship of the people who had the child. See, the legal definition of parent, see, a parent-child relationship. We're not concerned about a parent-child relationship. Nobody ever asked about a parent-child relationship. Let me show you what a parent really is. 
the father or mother, or as otherwise may be defined by statute such as through adoption or same-sex relations. In common law, a parent was simply the father and mother of the child or for a time only those children born within wedlock. All of your birth certificates show that you were not born within wedlock, that you were born outside of wedlock. Because why? The mother is the only one signing the form and she's not signing it as a parent, she's signing it as an informant. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, the guardian or custodian of the account is the United States government through its agent. Who's the agent? The agent, pay attention. Pay attention. The agent is the Federal Reserve. They say they're not the agent. They say they're not the custodian. I'm sorry, the code says that they are the custodian. The, the code says that they are the custodian. So let them put it in writing. Ladies and gentlemen, they will never put it in writing. Ever, 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 ever. Put it in writing. Never put it in writing. The reason why they won't be putting it in writing because <sighs> liability. Okay, liability. Now, I could open this up, my email up, and find out the exact one that says parent, but I figured I'd go through each one. Okay, I figured I'd go through each one so that you can see. All you got to do, and that's fiscal service. We found out who fiscal service is. Oh, and by the way, stupid morons, the ones who are telling me that. Uh, they talked about the parent. The minor may request that fiscal service transfer securities to his or her primary account. My video that I did was suggesting that those of you who are going to do this need to contact fiscal service. I showed you who fiscal services were according to the law, according to the statute. Somebody says, I misinformed you of that. We found out the fiscal services is the Federal Reserve. I had already done the video before showing you that the Federal Reserve is the custodian of the accounts for the Treasury. <sighs> Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I get it, it bothers me that we got these people who don't know how to read law, who don't know nothing about law, who have this basic understanding, basic education where they started doing research maybe five years ago. Probably, maybe even, let's give them seven. Okay, I told you all, I've been doing this since I was 15. Going over this information since I was 13. Listening to the adults who allowed me, this kid, at the time, a kid, to be a part of these conversations. At first, just to sit there and listen. That's all I could do was just listen. Listen here. But when they heard me, when everybody else was gone and maybe one or two of them were still remaining, they would ask me my opinion of what I heard because they wanted to see whether or not I could grasp the information. And I would explain to them my point of view. Then they would invite me into these conversations. So I did not just get this information last year like many of you. I did not just wake up. Oh, little Susie, wake up. Okay, I did not just wake up last year. This whole thing is about gaining control of the securities held in your account by the custodian. Okay, that's what this is all about, people. This is about your contacting. Who are you going to contact? Ghostbusters. When it's something strange in your neighborhood. Okay, this is about you. Hold on. Let's get that Ghostbuster back over here. Because these are the official Ghostbusters. You need to contact fiscal services to transfer the securities held in his or her primary account. So if you're going to, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say this again. I can't think for you. You're going to have to go over this entire code and break it down. It says the minor may request that fiscal services transfer the securities held in his or her primary account. So why don't you all contact fiscal services, ask them what is the process for transferring securities held in our primary accounts? They'll say, well, that's not the part we don't do that. Excuse me. According to the code, you are the fiscal service agent for the United States Treasury. Are you not? I showed you the code. I showed you the statute. So, 
I just need to know the process or who have you guys authorized to carry out that part of the code. Just that simple, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents. It is really just that simple. So ladies and gentlemen, it won't happen again. Some of you, I just had two people, one by email, one by telephone conversation calling to correct me. You ignorant mother, you don't get to correct me. Especially when you're talking out the side of your neck. Instead of calling me to correct me, what you should have done is, look, I think this is also a possibility. Instead of telling me that I'm wrong, because you tell me I'm wrong, I'm going to check you. Because I've done way too much research for you to be sitting up here telling me I'm wrong. When I can back up everything I say, just because you show me one little stupid code and you don't even know the definition of the words for what you're showing me, that's the problem. I show you what I'm talking about, but then you want to sit up here and say, well, we just figured this out and we just figured that out. You haven't figured out nothing. Do you guys not, un you don't, don't get it, do you? Somebody put out a couple of videos and everybody ran after those videos without doing their research. Those people who are talking about that are only taking part of the code and running with it. I'm giving you the whole code and I'm not just giving you the whole code, I'm giving you the whole code and whole code, whole code, Hulk Hogan and more. Sorry, it has been a long day for me. Like I said, I've been up since five and it's been a thinking day because I've had to put on my thinking cap. You got a thinking cap? I got a thinking cap. Do you mean your cap thinks for you? You better believe my cap thinks for me. Come on, cap, think. Oh, he don't want to talk right now, y'all, but he normally he talks all the time. So I got a thinking cap, okay? The procedure for opening the account for a minor, okay? The procedure for opening the account for a minor. No, let me, 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 let me. One moment. I'm sorry. I said one moment after I'd already put you guys on hold, but I'm back now. This is the section the person was highlighting. Let's go back. Uh-oh, I lost my music. There it is. Opening an account in the name of a minor. Pay attention, people. Not opening an account for a minor. Open an account in the name of a minor. Pay attention. Number one. A parent or individual who provides the chief financial support of the minor may, may, may open an account for a minor. We've shown this to you before, haven't we? The person opening the account for the minor is referred to as the custodian of the minor's account. Well, before the parents opened up the account, the federal government opened up the account. Remember, the parent never opened up a quote-unquote primary account for the minor. Go back and look. Ask your parents, when did they open up your primary account? No, no, go ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead and ask your mama and your papa, even if they are no longer here, I'm going to go ask my mama too since she passed away in February. I'm going to go ask her, when did she open up my primary account so I can get control of my primary account? Because it says... The person opening the account for a minor is referred to as the custodian of the minor's account. Well, could the person who opened up the account for the minor be this person right here? Could it be that person? The individual who opened or provides the chief financial support of the minor may open up the account for the minor? Ladies and gentlemen, who provides the chief financial report uh, support for the minor? Is it not the... Financial support, pay attention. FRNs, Federal Reserve notes. I'm just being technical because that's how the law is. Could it not be the Federal Reserve and providing the Federal Reserve note? Could be the chief financial support provider? Since the parents are using Federal Reserve notes, could it not be the Federal Reserve? There's nothing in the statute that says that the custodian, pay attention, the person opening, uh-oh, don't want to move that. I want to do this the person opening up the account for a minor is referred to as the custodian of the minor's account man the wait 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 hold on y'all somebody want to sit up here and correct me want to challenge me 
The custodian is a fiduciary for the miner, as to the securities held in the miner's account. Your parents a fiduciary? Mama, you a fiduciary. That's right. You call me a douche? No, I said a fiduciary. You a douche every other day of the week. Just a fiduciary today. Okay. It don't make sense. Now, let's go. The custodian must have a primary treasury direct account. Does your mommy and daddy have a primary treasury direct account? Huh? Go ask them. Because it says they must have. It's not, a, it's not an option. They don't get to choose. They must have an existing primary treasury direct account in order to open the miner's account. Hmm. I bet you the Federal Reserve has a existing primary treasury direct account. So, before any of you want to check somebody who's already done the research, remember, I'm the one who brought this code to you. I'm the one who introduced it to you. Just because you read it and you want to take it literally for what it says as opposed to understanding exactly how statutes are written, that's up to you. I know better. But what I do know is that you guys are not asking the right questions because you're trying to ask questions based on that junk knowledge you've been getting from those other videos, which is why they give you the response. You got that from some other video. Some blah, 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 blah. Okay? I need y'all to hold on one more game. Okay, I want to do something. One second. Ladies and gentlemen, I am showing you right now the information from the idiot who wrote me and I'm gonna to explain to you why he's an idiot pay attention so regards to those videos I got off the phone with Bureau of Fiscal Services who told any of y'all to call the Bureau of Fiscal Services specifically said in the video that you're not supposed to be calling the Bureau of Fiscal Services because the Bureau of Fiscal Services is not the fiscal agent for the Treasury the Federal Reserve in the video I show you where the Federal Reserve is the fiscal agent for the Treasury so first you didn't pay attention hold on by the way this is why I don't allow you guys to comment under my videos because you do stupid things like this okay and when I say you guys I'm not talking to you guys who are loyal who are who, who, who are intelligent who pay attention who listen not to part of the video but to the whole thing I'm not talking to you I'm talking about the idiots who just want to jump out there no mommy I know how to swim I'm gonna jump out the deep end but honey you're only two years old don't worry about how old I am I'm gonna jump out the deep end honey you're sounding like a man don't worry about it I'm jumping off ah! okay I'm talking to those stupid people, the ones who just want to jump off the deep end, don't know what's below. And mommy goes, wait, little Timmy, there's no water in the pool. Oh, my God. Okay, you want to jump off the deep end and don't know what you're jumping into. I'm talking to you all. That's why you're not allowed to comment on my video because you don't know what you're talking about. So let's pay attention. Following the menu of my FRB branch bank, Hoping to secure the necessary forms. Following the menu. Anyway, dude in call center named Kevin was highly annoyed. Said there was no such accounts or securities held by the Treasury Direct. Issued at birth. Who in the, said there was any uh, funds issued at birth? Did anybody, did anybody ever hear me say, oh no, you got some funds issued at birth? Did, did, I, did I ever say that? You ain't never heard me say no bolt like that. Okay, he said I was misreading, misinterpreting the law. Excuse me? Do you know that these agents are not allowed, not permitted to give you legal advice? So how could he tell you you're misinterpreting law if he himself, if he himself is not a lawyer? Understand? So I went back and read CFR 363.27B Talking about minor accounts Opening an account in the name of the minor A parent This is the section I was focusing on I wasn't focusing on the parent Okay So the person opening the account for the minor Is the custodian Then he says not the Federal Reserve Bank Or membered banks Sorry idiot 
According to the code, the Federal Reserve Bank is the fiscal agent for the United States Treasury. So you're wrong, moron. Sorry, guys. So this is what this moron did. And I'm calling him a moron because I need him to check himself because if he had listened to the video, he would have seen me explain to people who who was. But notice what he did. Look, I very much appreciate what you're doing. But often, one person's misunderstanding or misrepresentation, let's hold on to these two words. See, my dictionary say, you don't even know how to spell. Let's show you what misinterpretation, how it's spelled. Let's, let's, let's just take away one of them S's because it's not Mr. University. We can't even do that. See, when I usually do misunderstanding, Ain't no misunderstanding, got some misunderstanding, got some misinterpretation. Oh, yeah, I had it right. He didn't like that. When when I normally do it, I do it with one S, cause I ain't gotta add no Miss Miss Universe in it. M I S S is for if you missed something, it's by itself. Thing. But when you add it to interpretation and understanding, it's only one S. Goes viral. I myself am guilty of this, posting, look, pay attention to what this idiot did. One person's misunderstanding or misinterpretation goes viral. He says he's guilty of it because he posted my videos in his group. I put that there because I don't want to highlight the group. I'm not here to embarrass the group. Ladies and gentlemen, if you pay attention to what I say in my videos, I don't make the mistake. If I make a mistake, I come back and I let you know. But what I did is I was very specific and said, you have to do your research first. And I said, this is what I would do. I would call this blah, blah, blah. If it were me, I didn't tell you to do anything. Hold on. This is him highlighting this. Of course, that doesn't prove the securities in a person's name issued at birth. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say this again. I ain't never told y'all y'all had any mother, anything issued at birth. Doesn't exist. The denial by one government civil servant, but it means that more better, better, pay, pay attention, he highlights this, better evidence must be found elsewhere. Ladies and gentlemen, we found some better evidence as elsewhere. Okay. I don't even know why I'm doing a spell check. I'm not keeping this. We humans are really good at deluding ourselves seeing what we want to see versus what is there example is people saying hdr 919 pays our bills one guy's misinterpretation went viral and everyone's quoting his misunderstanding i read the gold repeal act law and it says nothing of the kind ladies and gentlemen hold on because this is everybody's getting this from me let's do copy Everybody's getting the Gold Repeal Act from me, watching my videos, because I told you what the official title was from Congress. So let's get rid of this junk. Don't save. Come on. That's I'm writing a letter to some stupid mediator right there. Get rid of you too. And we're gonna, we're gonna go here, because we definitely have to get a misunderstanding misunderstood. Oh Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood. I'm just a man doing the best that I could. Oh, Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood. The limitation of gold ownership in the U.S. was repealed by President Gerald Ford, signed in the bill, printed United States citizens to purchase, permitting United States citizens to purchase, hold and sell, or otherwise deal in gold in the United States and abroad, with an act of Congress codified December 1974 ladies and gentlemen the gold repeal act had nothing to do with the limitation of gold it had everything to do with the fact that the use of gold in our financial system interfered with congress's right to regulate money See, I didn't ask for limitations on gold. I asked for the Gold Repeal Act. And as you see, none of these are the Gold Repeal Act. Well, this one says Gold Repeal Act 2015. Okay, an act may be cited as the Gold Trade Repeal Act. 
Sorry, this is 2015. We're looking for 1933. See, we still don't have Gold Repeal Act. The reason why you could hear me, see, frequently cited as the Gold Repeal Joint Resolution. Okay, this is the act of the 73rd Congress, and it's not we, it's not cited as the Gold Repeal Joint Resolution. It's recited as the Gold Repeal Act because the statute at large is the actual law, not the joint resolution. And we've done too many videos explaining to you guys the difference between House Joint Resolution and statute at large. That statute at large is the actual law where the joint resolution is not law. It's just a recommendation. Be it resolved by the House and Senate in joint session, we, the United States Congress, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it's a resolution. We resolutely decide that we're going to sit up here and resolutely kick your... Okay. Pay attention. Whereas the holding of or dealing in gold affects the public interest and are therefore subject to proper regulation and restriction and whereas the existing emergency what was the existing emergency in 1933 it was the great depression the global collapse the financial implosion that was permitted and allowed by the banks from 1926 to 1936 okay that was all the banks they were calling in their markers they took the liquidity out of the system that was the emergency has disclosed that provisions of obligations which purport to give pay attention which purport to give the obligee a right to require payment in a particular kind of coin or currency of the united states obstructs the power of congress to regulate the value of monies of the united states and are inconsistent with the declared policies of congress to maintain at all time the equal power of every dollar Equal power every dollar. Every dollar is equal. Told you. Okay. Hold on. Didn't want to do that. Wasn't trying to do that. Just. Come on now. Get rid of that. Uh-oh. I done went too far. Uh-oh. I don't know. I don't want to access that page. I wasn't looking for that page. I think I lost it all together. Yep, I lost it all together. I gotta pull it back. Give me one second. History, history, history. Whoa. I don't have the gold repeal like anymore, guys. It's completely gone. I guess somebody didn't want me reading it. Let's go back. Let's go back, see if we can get it. I gotta read the rest because it's important because the person said that nobody, the law didn't say anything about the bills being paid. It did not say about any of all your bills being paid. Ladies and gentlemen, it's called an exempt account. That's because they're reading it from other statutes about it being exempt and you having an exempt account. That's coming from other statutes. It's not coming straight from the Gold Repeal Act, but it is worded within the Gold Repeal Act. So let's pull up that act again. Gold Repeal Resolution, December 9th, or December 10th, 2009. Oh no, that's not the one I want. Stop! 73rd Congress. <laughs> this is not... Oh God. What we were just reading, it said it was done December 10th. No, that was just the date it was posted. Okay, this is the Gold Repeal Act. It's the official name of it. It says, Pay attention. Now therefore be it resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America and Congress assembled. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. This was not done by the United States, but it was done by the actual Congress. And notice how this is an actual quote from the actual statute. United States is not lowercase. Okay, this is the actual Congress. This is the United States Constitutional Congress. Because I want you to pay attention. Issued by the United States without America attached to it. They are letting you know that they know that there's a distinction between the two. Pay attention for those of you who don't believe that this law permits you to notify yourself that all of your bills are prepaid. Pay attention. Every... Uh-oh. 
Hold on, y'all. I'm, I'm expecting a call, so y'all hold on. We're going to get back to this in a minute. L ladies and gentlemen, you probably won't get this, so I'm going to have to tell it to you. That was one of the people who wanted to consult. He's actually someone who has been communicating with me for quite some time. I specifically, because there was a little confusion, I asked him to call me. I asked him to call me when I put you guys on hold the last time. I texted him or typed him an email asking him to call me when I was pasting that other email in there so you guys could see the idiot trying to tell me what's going on. So, sorry I put you guys on hold for that long. If you look at the clock from the time I put you on hold, just go back, rewind the video about another 15 seconds or one minute and you'll see what the time was and you'll see it's almost an hour that I gave to him at no charge. I won't do that for the rest of you. Like I said, it depends on how I feel. Some days I have an attitude. In other days, I have patience. Some days I get idiots sitting up here telling me that I'm wrong and I'm lying and misleading people and misdirecting people and misconstruing things and misunderstanding things and misinterpreting things and don't even know how to spell misunderstanding and misinterpretation. And it causes me a little bit of anxiety but since he said that he read the gold repeal act how many times have you guys heard me read this act on the on the internet huh how many times you heard me say this particular gold repeal act on video and he's only talking about the gold repeal act because we know if you mention the word gold repeal act you got it from eon because he's the only one that says gold repeal act is the official title pay attention Every provision, see, resolved by the United States House and Senate in General Assembly of the United States of America, see, assemble. Now, how do we know this is a General Assembly? General means all. When in uh, legalese, general means all. Okay, pay attention. Want you to pay attention. Uniform value, United States, exists in emergency. This is Congress in its General Assembly because it's the full House and the full Senate. Thus, it is of the United States of America. America, America. God said his grace on me. What, Roseanne Arnold? <laughs> Roseanne Barr, Arnold, Arnold Barr, whatever her name is. Where's she at now, y'all? She ain't doing nothing, ain't she? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, every provision contained or made with respects, any obligation. Look, ladies and gentlemen, that's a bill. Somebody is billing you for something. Any obligation which purports to give the obligee your landlord, your credit card company, your bank, the government, a right to require payment in a particular kind of coin or currency or an amount of money in the United States is declared to be what? Against public policy. You can't violate public policy. Uh-uh. It's non-statutory. Is declared to be against public policy and no such provision shall be contained in or made with respects to any obligation hereafter. Ladies and gentlemen, this law makes it illegal for an obligee to demand payment from anybody within the borders of the United States. Doesn't even matter if it's a business account. It makes it illegal for them to do so because it violates public policy. Who controls public policy? Mama, I don't know. Who controls public policy? I, I, I'm told that the Congress may control it, but I don't know. I don't know what's going on with my mousey. Let's see. It says it obstructs the power of Congress to regulate the value of money. Hmm. But what about that policy thing you were just talking about? Well, what I was trying to tell you about the policy now, I want you to pay attention to the policy so you get it. Hold on. Let's go down just a little bit. Uh, I said a little bit and say all of that. Come on now. F stay with me now. And are inconsistent with the declared policies of Congress. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, Congress 
regulates. The public. Congress <clears throat> regulates the public. So anything that is against public policy is a violation of statute because this is the code of federal regulations. Now pay attention. This is where they say all your bills are paid shall be discharged upon payment dollar for dollar in any coin or currency or payment of legal tender and public debts and private blah 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 in any provision contained in any law authorizing an obligation to be issued under the authority you don't have to pay, pay attention to this because it contradicts this and according to the general principles of statutory interpretation It specifically says that if one provision of a law contradicts another provision, then the one that contradicts the other is to be omitted, ignored. Ladies and gentlemen, the first provision is the one that has precedent. The second provision is the one that has none. Okay? This is what is going on. So everybody wants to know, well, how do I pay this? And how do I pay that? And how do I get this? And how do I get that? I want to have my bills done. I want to have my bills paid. I want to get this done. I want to get that done. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. I have an individual who I know of who is calling, contacting me. And he just emailed me. And he wants a consultation. But he wants to know what to do next because he's in a situation where he just had the bank receive a summary judgment. There is no yes or no answer as to what to do next. Do you do this or do you do that? There is a what happened in the case. Was this brought up? Was that brought up? Are you appealing the case? There are so many different things. So I can't just answer that yes or no. And he's asking for a yes or no. Do you see? And... All I can tell all of you, so that you get it, is this is not something where you can watch a video and figure out how to maneuver in the system. This is something where you need to do a little bit of research. In my videos, I show you how I do my research, how I put together the law. I'm not concerned about the law. I don't need to quote every law. What I need to quote is the actual words. So you know what I actually do? What do you do actually? I'm so surprised and glad you asked. Well, what I do actually... Do you know actually? I met actually five years ago. You know, actually was all right until she smoked that stuff. And after she smoked that stuff, she named herself Ron West. Are you saying Ron West is actually? Yeah, he certainly is actually something else, ain't he? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, pay attention to this. This is the section I quote. The Gold Repeal Act, and this is the section I quote. Why? Because it says that no one has the right to require a payment from anyone else. No such provision. There is no law that gives anyone the right. See, it says every provision, every obligation, hereafter, heretofore, whatever, or not, such provision is contained or made with respect thereto shall be discharged upon payment. Dollar per dollar in any coin of terms of blah, blah, blah. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. I need you guys to understand something. The Federal Reserve issues not money to the banks, but they issue credits. The banks get to create money out of thin air. It's called paperless money in the form of credits. Dots, digits, desmos, zeros. Okay? That's what they get to do. But they can't do it exponentially because if that was the case, then there would, <laughs> the economy would definitely run amok. So they wouldn't be able to sustain that. No, they have certain policies they put in place to do this. Because they are allowed to do this, do you know that there's this thing called equal protection of law? Okay, we don't have access to lawful money. You don't believe me, read the statutes on lawful money. I just did a couple of videos talking about that. Since we don't have access to lawful money, we must have access to a means of existence, of living. That's why it's called a standard of living. 
and we must have means of maintaining a standard of living. Since we have the right to maintain a standard of living, and since the United States government did the Gold Repeal Act, and after the Gold Repeal Act was introduced, they if people say it's been repealed, the Gold Repeal Act has been repealed, the Gold Repeal Act has not been repealed. See, in order for them to repeal the Gold Repeal Act, they would have to reimburse all the Americans for whom gold they took in exchange for the promise to pay because they gave the American people an IOU that they would take care of them. But most people don't understand that. Most people don't get it. So someone and I were talking earlier today and we were talking about the banks. The banks and credit card companies and other companies, they do what's called a charge off. You guys, we did the video the other day and we showed you all about charge off and offset. Well, when they do a charge off, they receive tax credits or other business type credits. Do you know the law requires them to update your account? You see, when they receive the credit, they receive something of value. The law requires them to give consideration. But what you guys are not doing and what most people don't do is ask for the accounting. Demand the accounting. And as far as you people who have these mortgages and you're going into court, you heard the video that I did that said uh, uh, a hearing done the right way. Well, that was just a mediation hearing. You heard the questions I was asking that they could not answer. So, like I said, if you pay attention to most of my videos, it's at the end that I usually give information that I haven't given out before in such a way. Pay attention to this if you want to pay attention. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to your mortgages, when it comes to your mortgage payments, you all are not arguing the key point. The bank has received consideration. They take your house. You go to court. How come you're not asking them to refund you your mortgage payments when in the form of mortgage insurance? Remember, the mortgage insurance is part of your monthly payments. You have protection against default and you're not arguing that. The next time you go into court and they want to evict you out of your home, you say, oh no, you can't do that. I got insurance. You got insurance. What does that have to do? I have insurance. They can't foreclose on my house. I have foreclosure insurance. What are you talking about foreclosure insurance? Call it foreclosure insurance, people. I have foreclosure insurance. I've been paying for it since I got the mortgage. No, they can't foreclose on my house. It's part of the deed of trust. No, it's right here in the deed of trust. Right here it says mortgage insurance. I have foreclosure insurance. This is to prevent them from foreclosing on my house and taking my house from me. That's why I put it in here. I wrote this agreement. See my signature right there? So, no, you can't foreclose on my house. Not unless the insurance say they ain't going to pay. And I done paid my premiums. All right? So, no, you can't do this. I object. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody's been doing that. I've been telling you guys since 2012 to do it. Well, I didn't did it. I raised. No, you didn't. Stop lying. Stop lying. Okay? Stop lying to yourself. So, start raising the point that you have paid mortgage insurance premiums. And the mortgage insurance is required by law. And since it's required by law, and the law requires that property maintain mortgage insurance, I have foreclosure insurance as evidenced by the law and by the contract. You say that you're going by this contract, the deed of trust, you're saying that this is the agreement? Well, the agreement is that if I was said to be in default and the notice of default is evidence that somebody has said I'm in default, then that means that my insurance is there. If I get into an accident and I got insurance, you go after the insurance company. All right. Well, here, how come the insurance company ain't here? I asked for a continuance because we need to enjoin. As a matter of fact, I'm enjoining the insurance company into this matter. Now let them prove that my policy doesn't cover this. 
You people understand what I'm trying to say? My hope is that you do. So, the next time one of you decide that you want to comment on my video and my email, I will blast you on video. You don't get the comment on my video. Idiot telling me I'm misrepresenting the information. Telling me that I don't know who the fiscal service individual is. Let's see. 31. There it is right there. Telling me I don't know what I'm talking about? Under definitions, 225.2. Telling me I don't know what I'm talking about? Telling me that I'm misrepresenting the facts? Misrepresenting the information? Sorry. Gotta go down. Down, down, down. Come on now. I gotta do this. Authenticate instructions mean. Sorry, my computer is going real slow now. Really, really slow. Book entry! That's what we want. We want book entries. Custodian means a Federal Reserve Bank or an entity within the United States designated by such Federal Reserve Bank under the terms and conditions prescribed by such Federal Reserve Bank, a depository specifically designated by the Secretary of the Treasury for the purpose of this part or such other entities as the Secretary of Treasury may designate for the purpose of this part. So ask that mother idiot, what part of this does he not understand? What part of this am I misrepresenting when I'm reading the actual code to you? How could I misrepresent this information when I'm reading it word for word? Custodian means a Federal Reserve Bank. Does it say parent? No, it says custodian means a Federal Reserve Bank. And to show you, because I don't want anybody to misunderstand, because they, they'll say, well, that ain't talking about the U.S. Treasury. Book entry means that the issuance and maintenance of a government obligation is represented by an accounting entry or electronic record. Ladies and gentlemen, then we got this one right here. It says, having authority under federal law or regulation to approve a bond with surety or sureties and to approve a bond secured by the government obligation. Who issues bonds in the United States? Not the Federal Reserve. Isn't it the U.S. Treasury? Okay. This, oh, I'm sorry, dag nabbit. I know what the problem is. Let's go all the way up to the top. Come on now. All the way to the top. Pay attention. CFR Title 31. Do you guys know what CFR Title 31 is? Do, do you guys know what it is? Money and Finance Treasury. Don't worry about it. I know you didn't know. So when I get somebody telling me that I'm misrepresenting, misinterpreting stuff, when I'm showing you the actual law, and when I'm telling you what I know ahead of time, okay? Subtitle B, regulations relating to money and finance. The office of the Secretary of the Treasury. Ladies and gentlemen, that's whom we're dealing with is the Treasury Department because the Treasury Department controls the money and finance of the United States. That's Title 31. So the definition for custodian in Title 31 is the definition for custodian in Title 31. Watch this. We got this. Let's do that. Let's check that out. I don't know how to spell custodian. Uh oh. Yes, I do. I gotta change that. Gotta get rid of that I. Cause it's like custody. Oh God, no! It's supposed to be only one. Let's see if that will change it. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, Ladies and gents, come on now, move, computer. I might have to pause y'all for a second. Yes, I did mean. I don't mean custody, I meant custodian. 
I don't mean no custody. Allen property custodian. Custodian for damage. I want the definition. So, during World War II against Allen property custodian for damages of equitable relief. Equitable relief? Did you guys see that? Equitable relief? It actually said the words equitable relief. See, right there. The courts are courts of equity. Equitable relief. Everything is equity. It's all equity. Okay. So when I did this, I just wanted to make sure you understood that the custodian, we already know the custodian is, say, accounting by prior custodian of property and estate. When it comes to the treasury, Title 31, we know that the custodian can be either a parent or an individual entity, such as the, what I showed you on the paperwork. Matter of fact, let's Google definition of custodian. Come on. Google definition of custodian. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to tell y'all, it snowed yesterday. At first it hailed, and then it snowed. I'm just going to tell y'all how beautiful that looked. And don't look beautiful for a moment. Don't want it to be snowing and all that right now. It's too early. See? Custodian. 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 A person who has a responsibility to look after something. That's a trustee. The custodian of pension and insurance funds. Similar keeper, guardian. Ah, guardian. Sovereign guardianship. I wonder why I knew that. Steward, protector, the custodian of a relic. Okay, a person employed to clean and maintain a building. Ah, a custodian. He's a caretaker. He cleans the building. A caretaker. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, a custodian is not just somebody who sweeps. A custodian is somebody who's been placed in charge of something to protect it for another. The custodian, someone who keeps and protects something value from another person, for another person. A person who cleans and takes care of a building. Yes, because the building is something of value. So he protects it by cleaning it. What is custodian? Custodian definition meaning. So let's do the legal definition because we have the general definition. General! Let's do right here. Legal. L-E-G-A-L. -L. Legal. Okay. Legal definition for custodian, an individual with a trust for guarding and keeping property or having custody of a person as a, the warden of a prison. A person given custody of a child by a court order. So I want you to pay attention. The custodian for the treasury is not the parent. Pay attention, people. Pay attention to the words. It just made sense to me when I just said it. That's how things happen. How can your parents be your custodian? Pay attention. Your parents cannot be a custodian because remember, a custodian is an individual entrusted with guarding or keeping the property or having property of a person. We just learned that custodian means a person who has been entrusted with the protection of a property or keeping the property on behalf of another. How can your parents be the custodian of your account? It's when you don't use logic. It's when you fail. So don't let nobody say that I'm putting out misleading information when everything I talk about I can prove to you. I can show to you. And if I'm wrong, I will admit being wrong. But you don't sit up here and get to check me, telling me that I'm misleading and misinforming people. The only thing I do is inform people. I'm an informant. Informer. I'm sorry. Um, so let's go ahead and call this video. I call it. What are you going to call it? I don't know what I'm going to call it. Then why did you uh, sit up there and volunteer to call the video? I don't know. It just seemed like a thing to do. Oh, God. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bring this to an end. I hope you have a good day. I hope you have a good life. I hope you have a good night. But please understand, there are no quick fixes. You're going to have to understand what you're doing first before you can actually complete it.
That's all I'm saying. Have a good day.